Hey, this is Brooks with Character Design Forge. Designing a character is about capturing something visually, but it usually also means conveying something about their personality and story. Today, we're exploring the fundamental principle of character design that lends itself to conveying that, expression. Expression is all about conveying emotion, personality, and storytelling, which is typically done through the use of facial expressions and body language, and often assisted by visual cues like color. When trying to improve your own use of expression, it's important to keep in mind how different tones can affect the variety or extremity of expression you can reach. For example, Old Shakespearean stage plays called for a level of acting that required large, grandiose gestures, because even on a practical level, the entire audience needed to be able to understand them in large theaters. There was very little room for subtly conveying emotion, because it would likely be lost. Early film was silent, characters were grainy blobs of black and white, and so to convey clearly the emotion, their movements were cartoonish and exaggerated. Now, of course, films are able to capture color and sound in incredible detail. The performances that technology is able to capture have become more nuanced and layered because we can still understand that. Still though, depending on the tone, modern film and television still vary between serious and downright wacky tones. The important thing to take away here, in all tones, is that an expression is only as valuable as how clearly it was conveyed. Going back to our quality of clarity in character design, the more readily and easily you're able to convey something, the more successful you'll be in conveying that to an audience. In the same amount of time, animated characters have changed and progressed with technology. Early animation was black and white, and about as exaggerated and wacky as it gets. The golden age of 2D animation brought with it more complex emotions and expressions that still built on the principle of exaggeration. Depending on the tone, a 3D animated film like The Incredibles strikes an amazing balance between cartoonish exaggeration and nuanced human feeling. Much more recently, animated characters are being portrayed and composited into live action scenarios. But with that come some questions that we'll need to ask ourselves, and we'll get to that a little later on. There is a sort of hierarchy that we respond to in characters' expressions that starts with the eyes and body language. There are a lot of clear emotions we could convey using just these two elements. The overall arc of a character can express a lot. Curving backwards could mean they're confident, reactive, put off, or content. While an arc forwards could mean that they're tired, defeated, scared, readying themselves, or depressed. The eyes don't necessarily convey emotion all on their own. They're assisted by the eyebrows and the cheeks below. These three elements combine to make a domino mask shape that we can push, pull, and contort to convey expression. To make a clear expression, it often helps to use one line, direction, or point and allow the rest of the eyes to follow it, like a line facing down the middle of the eyes to convey anger or determination. You can get more interesting expressions through asymmetry. Be careful to avoid twinning your eyes, unless the situation calls for it. Usually, the more symmetrical an expression is, the more confident the character feels about how they feel. And the more asymmetrical, the more confused or unsure they are about how they feel. That same idea of using one line, direction, or point is useful for the rest of the facial features and the face as a whole. The nose can scrunch and compress together or curve over to the side. The same can be said of the entire face. Don't be afraid to treat it as if it was rubber or had an element of elasticity. And of course, the mouth, how open it is, which direction it's pulling toward, even the appearance of teeth, all contribute to an expression. There's a lot of discourse around the idea of animated characters going off model, usually meaning that an expression breaks the typical formation of the face. Now, while there are situations where this could be a problem, for example, a character like Thanos that's meant to exist in a live action tone would enter the uncanny valley as soon as he conveyed an expression usually reserved for more cartoony characters. I do, however, think that this discourse, especially the opinion that going off model is somehow a bad thing, a mistake or a demerit, 
is actually detrimental both to animated characters and the people who are trying to learn to draw them. You might find yourself going through attempts to give your characters clear emotion, but then you're hesitant to change something about the face. And while it is important that a character be designed with the capacity to express the emotion you're going for in the first place, I think you should always value the storytelling and feeling over picture-perfect accuracy. Don't allow a voice in your head to restrict you to on-model drawing. Value the expression. There's, of course, a lot of give and take to find a balance in, but think of this like the difference between constructing a human with cylinders and spheres, drawing with construction in mind, and capturing the energy and flow of them through gesture. While constructed drawing will likely make your drawing more correct, and it is important to learn, gesture drawing is by far a more emotional capture, and that's important to keep in mind when creating expressions. Speaking of making Thanos emote like a Looney Tune, this brings up an important topic in the age of live-action remakes. Now while I never want to disparage the artists working on these newer films, and there's of course a lot of good things about them, since they are, after all, aiming for different goals than the original film, people like myself who value animation so much can't help but be hesitant about these new translations, oftentimes right from the first trailer. Compare, for example, the classic Lion King film, a landmark piece of animation with incredible character designs, a wonderful use of color, and clear, pure emotional expressions. These expressions are made possible because the characters themselves are distilled, abstracted, stylized versions of the animals that they're portraying. Their arcs, eyes, and faces can exaggerate, going off-model as it were, all in service of a clearer story. It is, of course, impressive that characters can be animated so realistically now, but looking at the original sequence of Simba, Timon, and Pumbaa as time passes, the expressive, arcing dance across this bridge is replaced by reasonable, logical locomotion. The second that a film like this becomes live action, it's not even possible anymore to convey that same feeling. The tone has changed, so the expressions are now much more reserved and restricted. Realism now becomes valued over all else. So while there's nothing wrong with realism, it begs the question why animation has somehow become a less legitimate medium in the wider public's eyes. Why will some adults be so emotionally invested in going to see a live-action remake of a childhood favorite, but feel as though their adulthood would be threatened by revisiting that original film now? Keep all of this in mind when choosing the tone your characters exist in. Remember, too, that more realistic is not necessarily always better. Expressions can be much clearer the more abstracted or stylized the tone is. Here's a practical tip and exercise, both for learning about expression and for learning more about your character, which I highly recommend. As we've talked about before, creating art that is based on existing art is an inferior strategy to creating art based on something real. For example, Mrs. Incredible's facial expressions are an abstraction of a real person's facial expressions. So if you made expressions based on Mrs. Incredible, that would be an abstraction of an abstraction. Make sense? That's why it's an extremely valuable exercise to screen grab from films or TV shows where an actor is conveying a variety of emotions, and then try to capture them in drawings that value the essence of the expression over construction, accuracy, or anything else. Next, inform your existing character designs with expressions from real people as well. In this case, my character Jacqueline doesn't actually have a similar personality to Shuri from Black Panther. And so some of these expressions aren't ones she would ever realistically perform inside of a story based on Jacqueline. However, that's actually to my advantage, as trying to draw Jacqueline outside of her comfort zone helps me to get me out of my comfort zone and keeps me from drawing the same poses and expressions over and over. There's a lot more to learn about expression and designing characters around a personality that I'll be covering in my renewed version of my course Learn Character Design, which you can check out at learncharacterdesign.com. That's it for me today. I'm making new videos every week at 11 a.m. Eastern, Tuesday mornings on Character Design Forge. Subscribing on YouTube lets you know when new videos are made available. My Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, and Patreon are all Bagel Denizen, and you'll see them in a few seconds. Thank you so much for watching, and have fun creating!